everyone and welcome back to our first weekly video regarding our second unit that talks and investigates more the relationship between animals and human basically nature. So along with the highlights of the unit we're going to start off with the key related concepts and global context as we're going to identify each one of them and create at the end a statement of inquiry reflecting each one of them individually. As we're going to look at a lot of pictures and we're going to puzzle them up in order for us to reach the essential question or statement of inquiry regarding this unit. And as an introduction, we're going to go through a lot of concept of vocabulary words, history, circumstances, background, analysis, first, second, read, choice, explore, historical background, shy, and lowlands to our first um, text that we're going to have, which is a blessing by James Wright. So we're going to, again, develop a deeper understanding of the main ideas and share thoughts through spoken and written practices. We're going to explore the background of the author in alignment with the type of the text we're dealing with and lastly we're going to make a lot of personal inferences in regard to the essential question that we have and then moving on to a quick summary regarding a blessing by james wright so it explores a profound moment of connection with nature as um and the encounter with these wild animals is a deeply moving experience for the speaker himself, and he described it as a blessing. The, the poem emphasizes the power of nature to evoke a sense of wonder and, again, spiritual connection, even in a seemingly ordinary moment. It highlights the beauty and importance of such moments in uh, basically our lives. Now we're going to go deeply through the figurative language of the poem itself. So we're going to examine the difference among various figurative devices and we're going to enable individuals to express complex ideas, emotions, and concepts. So the concept of vocabulary regarding the figurative language is going to be simile, metaphor, poetry, structure, alliteration, stanzas, analysis, choice, vocabulary, and differentiation. So in the poem itself, uh, we're going to, um, you know, the figurative language served a huge per basically importance and uh, purpose so we have imagery we have emotional depth when you talk about the figurative language and how it infuses the poem with emotional uh, depth um, regarding the author's description and the action that he goes uh, beyond um, you know the mere observation and then we're going to talk about human nature connection itself and Lastly, the figurative language helps to convey the deep emotional and spiritual impact of uh, the ordinary encounter of nature Unscoring the pound themes of connection, transcendence, and the beauty of the natural, basically, word. Now, in relation to the themes, uh, the defining is to limit by Oscar Wilde is a very well known um, quotation that actually reflects the nature of identity and how uh, one can limit you know, one's identity by focusing on just one part of, you know, view. So we're going to um, be exposed to nature and human nature at the same time. And we're going to learn the impact on uh, of such in factors on human dignity at the same time. So this quote actually suggests that seeking to define oneself can limit one's identity. Uh, exploring, um, you know, the themes and styles in literature can expand. However, you know, if you explore different themes and styles of literature and, you know, themes, you can expand your own understanding and your own identity. And now moving on to linking and action reps, we're going to differentiate between them, their structure, then function and use in regard um, to the sentence. And we're going to recognize how verbs are essential components of sentence structure, including subjects, predicates and complements. In summary, so linking verbs and action verbs are two different types of verbs in English and each one can serve a distinct purpose in a sentence. So action verbs actually express uh, action that someone or something is performing. These uh, verbs how, uh, show how actually physical and mental actions and they're the most uh, common verbs that we have in English. So like write, think and uh, uh, saying, you know, their action reps, they show you how to perform a certain kind of action. However, linking reps are usually um, a connector. They connect the subject of a sentence, a subject complement, and it can be a noun, it can be an adjective, or even any other type of expression that renames or describes the subject um, itself. So we're talking about helping verbs, common verbs. Um, uh, so, for example, she is uh, talented. So is here is a linking verb because it connects she to the complement of uh, being talented for example so, and now moving on to a summary certainly the relationship between examining a uh, style and theme in literature and the establishment of a meaningful um, identity is not explicitly encapsulated in a well-known quotes however related quotes emphasize the importance of self-discovery and the impact of choices in action uh, and actions in one's identity these quotes suggest that exploration of 
Themes and styles in literature can influence the choices and actions that contribute to one's self-identity. And this is what we talked about when we mentioned to define is to limit. And again, it's the same concept and theme that we dealt with regarding the um, poem itself, that we define ourselves through the connection um, that we make with others or even the connection that we make with nature itself. And that we have to expand our connections and journeys and discoveries in order for us to extend on our own basically identities in oneself.